everyone. Welcome back to Studio 33 Art by Kay. Sorry I've been missing a little bit lately. I've um, actually just come back from a wonderful trip to Germany, Austria and Switzerland. Um, I've been waiting to go to Europe for 46 years. So I finally got there, which is um, fantastic. And I had a wonderful time with my daughter and her husband. But now I'm back. And so what I want to do today, I've got some of the um, Montmartre Dimensions paint, which is um, a very highly pigmented paint that dries very glossy. It's sort of their premium range for, um, for Montmartre. Um, I've had these colours mixed up for a long time, probably over a year, um, with some Australian Flow Troll. And when I tested them, they were very quite thin. Um, so today I'm just going to try and use some of them up. Um, and I'm using them on this MDF, these round placemats that I've bought. And they, um, I'm not going to use a base because the paints are so thin. They don't need anything to help them run. And I'm going to do a um, reverse dip. I'm using this plastic wrap that I received something in. So it's a bit different. Normally the plastic wrap that you get um, is very uniform you know the same bubbles one way as the other whereas this i don't know if you can see it's kind of more lines so i thought i'll just try that for my dip um so i've got to put the bubble side down sorry side the bubble side down and then i'm going to pick that up and that'll give it a bit of a different texture as well so i'm going to do um instead of over a cup which i think from paints would um mix too much because they're thin i'm just going to do the spiral technique um and that will keep them sort of more separated a little bit and i might use a skewer just to draw some lines in it um just to give it a bit more of a flower shape so without further ado i'll start laying these paints down so the first one i'm laying down is the montmartre dimensions phthalo blue so i'm basically going to start in the middle and just do a spiral it's fairly thin and I'm not great at doing spirals as you can see but that does not matter one little bit and the next color is the dimensions monastral cerulean when I was over in um, Europe recently, and I was in, where was I, Zurich, I went to an art museum there, and I actually saw a lot of original Monet, um, Van Gogh, uh, who else, um, Picasso, and so on, a lot of the absolute greats. And I saw the original artworks, and that was really something else, I really, really enjoyed seeing those um, next color I'm putting down is the pearl wine so some of these are pearl colors some of them are just plain acrylic without any pearlization it's hard to see how this is going to turn out but I'm pretty sure it will you can see how thin that paint is it's just running but I didn't want to have to mix up any more to thicken it up because I think I actually used the last of these when I did um, fill these up some time ago. Um, next is the Pearl Sapphire. So it doesn't really matter what order I lay, lay these down. And just round we go. So this is something that the new people can give a go. You can get some really interesting effects doing these reverse dips. Of course, Fiona Art uh, is the queen of the reverse dip and double dips. And every other sort of dip, she's great. So check her channel out if you haven't already. And this is the um, Dimensions Magenta. So I'll be putting some colour on top of other colour now. So I'm running out of gaps. As you can see, there's heaps of paint on there. And any gaps that I get left will pretty much fill up when I squish down the um, 
the plastic. And the last one for the dimensions is the ultramarine blue. So again, I'll just try and fill in the gaps there as much as I can. And now I'm just going to add a little bit of the Montmartre pouring paint gold, which is my favourite gold. Just going to put a few little blobs here and there. Fill up some of those gaps. So it's just pretty random. A few little bits here and there. As I say, those bits where there isn't anything will be pretty much Fill it up anyway, and we'll just do a bit of a sprinkling of blob, 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 blob. It's a special technique, it's called the blob, blob technique. There you go. Okay, so now I'm just going to be getting a bamboo skewer. I'm just going to draw some lines through here. I need to just wipe off my skewer in between. Just to give the slight shape of a, the petals of a flower. You can see how thin that paint is. Okay, more bubble there. Just bear some of those bubbles with my heat embossing tool. And I just love that Montmartre pouring paint gold. It just gives a beautiful effect. I find the um, Deco Art 24 Carat tends to sort of put a film over everything, whereas the pouring paint gold from Montmartre doesn't tend to do that as much. Okay, so now I'm going to lay down my plastic wrap. Actually, it's hard to tell which is the right and wrong side. I don't think there is a right and wrong side. If you've got normal bubble wrap, always put down the bubble side. Um, this one I don't think matters too much. I'm just going to lay that straight down. Gently tap it down just to make sure that it's touching everywhere. And this is just to show really that you can use very thin paint for this technique in this circumstance. <laughs> where I haven't put a base down. Okay, that looks like it's pretty much touching everywhere. So now I'm just going to bring my corners together into the middle. It's very, very thin and runny under there. All the corners up. And then I'm trying to lift straight up into the middle, whether or not I am, is another thing. Let's go. Goodness. Just tilt the paint back to get that centre back to more or less the centre. And you can see that paint is very runny, so I'm going to want to get some of that off there. I'm loving the pattern. It's, it's not uniformly um, a flower because the paint was so runny, it's kind of um, moved it a lot, which I knew that would be the case. So now I'm just going to give it a little spin. just spinning that gently so now for the a different effect I want to do on top of that is I'm using a um, 
sink strainer and because it's kind of um, concave here you've got to have your paint quite thick which is well, deep I should say which this is so it just gives you this unique little pattern so you're just pressing it down into the paint you can see you get these lovely little um, petal effect got to give it a good push though As I say, you need your paint to be um, deep enough that the centre of this will go right down into the paint. Okay. So it's just given that lovely little edge there. Well, I do one in the centre. I actually quite like the centre as it is. I think I just want to do a little balloon dip into the middle there. Um, or will I use this? Hmm, I'll use this. Let's see what happens. Okay. I need to do just half edges around the edge here. So I'm just doing a half moon on the very edge. Should probably be wiping this off in between but I'm not too worried about the colors kind of mushing in a bit go back to the beginning I think I am okay Oops, getting it all over my fingernails. So a little spin again. Radio. So you can see that using that little um, sink strainer has given that really unique little pattern around like a little flower and this is the part that I did the double dip that's showing sort of spreading out. Mm. Just wondering if I want to um, use some of the sink strainer a bit more. I might just come around here with that as well. I just love the effect that it gives. Yeah. It's kind of like doing a balloon dip, but it's just that it's got more structure to it. Yep, I think that's good, just like that. I don't think I want to do anything else here. I want to burst these bubbles, though. So as you can see, the sink strainer just gives that really different um, effect, like the little, like little flowers in amongst there. This gives an effect that nothing else does. Um, so that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that and we'll give that a go. Um, you can try that with the, the thicker paints as well and that the, the little um, press downs with the sink strainer will hold their shape a bit differently. But um, that's basically this um, technique. Okay, so I'll take, bring you down for a close-up. So here we are coming down for the close-up of this pretty little piece. Now as you can see where I used the sink strainer, see how you get these beautiful little well-shaped flowers. It's a bit different 
two balloon kisses, which I do love too. Um, it's just a lovely effect. Now, I could have done the um, little sink strainer kisses without having done the plastic wrap um, reverse dip first. Um, and it just gives a different effect again. But I, um, I just wanted to do that first this time and see what I would get. And I really do love the effect. So hopefully this will dry okay, seeing as the paints were so thin. Um, but anyway, so we'll be back in a couple of days doing another one with where I don't do the reverse dip. I just do the um, sink strainer kisses. Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed that one today, guys. And um, we'll see you back here in Studio 33 in the not-too-distant future. Until then, stay safe. Bye-bye.